Okay, so here we start with personal finance. Um, reasonable debt. This person is talking about having a campfire being great and having an uncontrollable wildfire being bad. And fires are like debt. You can have reasonable debt or unreasonable debt that takes over your life and s makes you suffocate. So she's talking about the slippery slope of debt and the unwanted stresses that it, it expands like a snowball from hell. Um, and it damages your credit over time if you have bad uh, debt and don't pay it. It causes fear and anxiety. It's difficult to repay due to the sheer size, balance, and interest rates of high debt, especially being careful of credit cards that can have 29% interest rates. Now, if you ever had enough money to invest, uh, the first thing the investment person might say to you is get rid of all your credit cards because if you have any credit card debt, they can't earn more investing your money than your credit card debt is going to charge you. So you don't want to say take a credit card loan of $1,000 to invest in something like, say, cryptocurrency and then have a 29% interest rate on that unless you think you're really going to beat 29% in anything. It's probably pretty rare. Okay, so... Student loans make up a lot of people's debt, and then someone who just has graduated college still has to think of paying all that debt. So sh this woman is saying if someone graduated college and actually got a $50,000 a year job, which I don't know anyone who's just graduated college personally who has a job other than valet parking and working at Starbucks, um, they're saying that their taxes are 8000 their health savings account, which is an account you can create that's not taxable, but you put money into it in case you have a health issue. Um, and they have student loans. She's saying they're going to pay $4,000 in the student loans a year. They're going to put $8,000 into their health savings account, $8,000 to taxes, $15,000 to rent. I'm not sure where they're renting uh, at that price unless they're sharing rent with somebody they're living with. Utilities are $800, cell phone $800 groceries and household items 4200 gas car and insurance 4500 that total is $46,000 that's just insanity so I'm not sure a lot of people around here are making that kind of money but you guys can let me know if you disagree I know Hanover New Hampshire has the highest rate in New Hampshire of people making an income of about $96,000 a year per person and uh, that's where Dartmouth College is, so it's an educated kind of uh, liberal town with a lot of professors and stuff and doctors because you have Dartmouth Hitchcock Hospital there, actually. I didn't even think about that. So um, the average income around here, I think, is, is way lower. Um, and especially now with all this COVID, it may be absolute poverty level, so... I'm not sure what that is per person, if it's 14000 or 20000 All right, so asking teenagers to plan for their future is a big ask. Teenagers are not actually neurologically wired to think ahead, but planning before college or spending is vital. Um, helping children with their decision making. Anyway, they said the average person in 2017 graduated with $32,000 in debt and a 5.3% interest rate. That's an expense of $350 a month for the next 10 years or $42,000. So they borrowed $32,000 and at 5%, they're gonna pay back $42,000. I know a lot of people are going to college and partying and getting into this debt and not thinking about the fact that they have to pay it back. In fact, if a student doesn't pay back their student loan, eventually it will attach to their um, everything. Uh, in some cases, a loan can attach and take off your paycheck. In other cases, the outstanding loan of a student loan would affect whether you could get a mortgage to buy a house if you wanted to do that. So while some loans may be justified, the problem of paying student loans and having a good wage job starting out is difficult. Some people cannot find jobs and loan payments are typically due within six months of graduating. And the interest keeps growing even during school years. Now I've heard people argue the interest doesn't grow during school years, but it does. So if somebody takes four years to graduate, that 5% interest is continually com adding, adding, adding to their debt. Credit scores. Building your credit score is one of the most important factors for your personal finance, building your credit score. Um, 
how you budget and how you manage your money and how you even ha you have to actually have some type of debt to build your credit score. So getting a little credit card and then making sure you pay it off at the end of every month is a good way to start building a credit score. If you have a car loan or if you bought a car and you have financing on that, that's building credit score, especially making sure you're paying everything off at the end of every month, not ever carrying a load on the credit card. If you charge $300 on the credit card, make sure you have $300 at the end of the month to pay that credit card. Or you're gonna pay 29% interest on some of them. Now, if you think about the math on that, after just a few months or a few years, if you bought a coat, you could have bought 10 coats, you know? And so be very careful about credit card debt because it is what eats a lot of people up. I know a person who started a business and decided to use their credit cards as refurbishing the business place and then running the whole business. Now they're in so much debt, it's just crazy. And they continually take those 0% credit cards that come in the mail and they transfer balances over. And it actually sometimes has a fee to transfer a balance, even though they say it's 0% for so many months, there's sometimes a fee to move the money to somebody else's credit card company. So be very careful of that. So this person says, reliably pay off your credit cards and other debts. 35% of your credit score is based on your payment history. Use less credit than you are given. So another example, especially for younger people, is if a credit card company gave you $1,000 on the credit card as your limit, they really prefer you to stay below 50% of that, even a third of it. So say if you had $1,000 and you only spent $300 every month and you paid it off every month, that's the best way to increase your credit rating. But if you spend 1000 every month, they get a little worried. And if you ding over 1000 where they say, ooh, you went too high, they also get worried. And it doesn't bring your credit score as high as little charges and paying it off at the end of every month. Okay? So use less credit than you are given. 30% of your credit score is based on how much you owe relative to how much you can borrow. So if they've decided you can borrow 1000 and they figure out how much you've borrowed compared to what they think you should be able to based on your income, um, that affects 30% of the credit rating. That's known as credit utilization rate. <clears throat> Have a long credit history is important. 15% of your score is how long you've had a credit rating. So even though you might be young and even though people might say to you never get a credit card, it can be a good thing to have some sort of debt and have it be a low ratio to what your income is because that way you kind of show up on the boards of how they rate you for debt. And then if you do need to get a car loan or you do want to try to get a mortgage, you have some level of history with the credit rating bureaus. If you've just started out, there's not much you can do to approve the metric on this one. You've got to use credit cards for a while. Keep your credit cards longest histories open. So don't go opening and closing credit cards also, because every time you close a credit card, it actually affects your credit rating. Even if you have a really good credit score, if you shut down any credit card, it just goes So be careful about opening all the little credit cards all over the place that then you don't use and then you want to close, because if you do decide to close them, they eventually sort of die. Like if you opened one at TJ Maxx or something and it gave you 15% off the purchase that day, if you don't use it for... I don't know if it's a year or so, they end up shutting it down. I don't know if that shutdown is considered you canceling or closing it and if it would decrease your credit rating, but be careful about kind of how many credit cards you're carrying around and how, how they benefit you. Um, so if you have a credit card you opened first when you were youngest, apparently even keep that one open and just keep it open because that's gonna be your longest history. Better yet, if you're a teenage kid, add a kid to your credit card account so you can help build up credit early. Now that's interesting because I never knew that that would work. I didn't know that if you put your child's name on your credit card it would affect their credit history. But that's interesting. Rely less on new credit. 10% of your score is based on the number of loans you have. Too many new loans can drag your credit score down. So don't get a loan for a car at the same time you get a loan for school or whatever. So be careful of how many loans you have out. Have multiple types of credit cards without turning it into a debt fireball. 10% of score is based on your variety of debt. 
For example, lenders like to see that you can pay back both credit cards and student loans at the same time. So if you had a car loan and a credit card, those would be two types. So here's a, there's a graphic. It says 300 to 850. That's the lowest and highest of your credit scores. So 300, you get going up if you have open credit cards, accounts, and good standing. And then you're halfway to 850 if you pay your bills on time. And then you're three quarters of the way to 850 if you pay down your debt. So they want to see you paying down your debt, having multiple types of loans, and having a longer credit history, having a good credit history, not having too much debt compared to your income. 65% of your total credit score is completely within your control. So that's good to know. Pay your bills on time. Just do it. Set it up on auto pay. Additionally, you can make micro payments on credit cards to keep the utilization rate lower. You do this by paying your credit card bill more than once a month. Ideally, you pay the full balance at the end of the month as well. This is a good way to lower your overall credit utilization for the purpose of improving your credit score. You can also ask for a credit limit increase while keeping your spending the same. However, don't spend more just because they will lend you more. So, for example, if you know you're going to spend 300 every month and your credit and your credit allowed is 500, you can ask them for an increase to say 750 or 1000, but don't use it. Just stay here using the same amount you were using. And that will get your credit score better because your utilization will be less. And then paying it off every now and then. You could even I think write a check in the store when you're when you're there. You some of the stores like maybe TJ Maxx you can give them a check or their apps now on your phone. So you literally charge the thing on your credit card at the store and make the payment on your phone. And that would be the best credit utilization because you're not even, you know, you're, you're getting the points for using the credit card and yet you're also getting the points for paying it off right away. And there's no interest. Like I wouldn't want to see you use a credit card that had an interest just for borrowing something. I'd want to see you have a no fee credit card that lets you borrow and if you pay it off on time at the end of the month it charges you zero there's like you don't want something that charges you the minute you start borrowing okay so that is 12 minutes 22 seconds counting it as 0.25 math finance